NPTE Study Cast. All right, welcome to NPTE Study Cast with Bridget Ripa, and we're talking about uh, spinal cord injury. We're going to start out with anterior cord. What is it, Bridget? Anterior cord syndrome is literally what it sounds like. It's damage to the anterior or anterior lateral portions of the spinal cord um, with preservation of the posterior portions. Got it. All right. So that's the anatomy. That's what's involved. Mm -hmm. Any particular causes or mechanism of injuries that are common? Yeah. So it's um, usually common with a hyperflexion or a burst fracture injury. Sometimes the anterior spinal artery can be damaged, which also causes the anterior cord syndrome. They're also going to present with kind of a variable loss of motor function as well as pain and temperature temperature sensation, but they are going to have intact proprioception and light touch. Okay. That's important. Helps us with differential diagnosis. What else could anterior cord appear as? Um, most of these people are going to have a, you know, some sort of spinal cord injury, depending on how the person presents, especially acutely because their presentation can change. It could be any of the other spinal cord injury syndromes. Um, so posterior cord, brown saccard, central cord, cauda equina. Pretty quickly, you'll, you'll notice clinically how anterior cord can be differentiated from those. We can also consider MS, spinal infarct, spinal tumor, GBS, so Guillain-Barre, and then transverse myelitis. Special tests. Now, how do we prove it? What are some special tests that would be involved with spinal cord injuries? Again, the clinical presentation is going to give you a good idea, but then it can also be confirmed with a CT or an MRI. Treatment examples. Now, what does a physical therapist do about it when you're working with someone with anterior cord? Treat them like any other patient with a spinal cord injury, and then obviously modify your treatment based on their specific impairments. So using the ICF model to kind of guide your treatment. So looking at their body function and structure impairments, their activity limitations, and their participation restrictions. So you're going to want to address the medical management first, making sure that these patients are on a bowel and bladder program, emphasize motor learning, task-specific training, neuromuscular re-education and strengthening, weight-bearing, tone management, FES, functional electrical stimulation, aerobic training, positioning, splinting, bracing, locomotion if applicable. With any kind of patient with a spinal cord injury, you want to pay attention to shoulder pain. But this patient population, you really want to allow for compensation. So some other neurological populations, you really want to try and uh, decrease how much they're compensating, but these patients, you want to allow them to compensate. Got it. Here's your example question. Now, how will this appear on the NPTE? Any examples? Yeah, I would say um, the mechanism of injury is going to be a big key because that's how you really differentiate all of these different syndromes is, is how the injury took place. But then also going back to the anatomy and knowing motor, pain, temperature, proprioception, light touch, what's affected for this specific syndrome. Got it. That's your interior cord. Yeah. NPTE Study Cast. Brewed by the PT Pinecast.